Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue, and we are back here at the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando, Florida. This is the centennial year of the PGA of America. I think it's the 63rd straight year of the Merchandise Show here in Florida. Lila Mackey from the Philadelphia section of the PGA. It's always good to see a familiar face down here, and I'm sure, Lila, you're dealing with club pros in the Philly area. You've seen a lot of familiar faces. Absolutely. We've seen a ton of our pros. We've been down here for, I've been down here for a week now, and um, we have been doing a lot of planning, a lot of, you know, updates with PGA Junior League, a lot of stuff around the centennial. They give us a lot of information as far as what's coming out this year, the thanks PGA Pro, hashtag thanks PGA Pro. I want to ask year. you about that. Yes. That is sort of like the slogan for the PGA of America this year in 2016. In the past, they thank golf course superintendents, and this year the emphasis is on club pros specifically, right? Absolutely. It's really a, this year is going to be all about our members, all about thanking them for everything they've done to make golf such a great sport and what they've done over the past 100 years to really make golf what it is today. And um, it's really exciting to see what the next 100 years brings. But, yeah, they're using a hashtag thanks PGA Pro initiative. So if you have a story or anything that's really meaningful to you about your PGA professional and how they've helped you, in your life in any way, please share it uh, using that hashtag, and it should be it should be really exciting. Yeah, it should be, and, and I like the fact that uh, the PGA of America has gone to some of the better-known touring pros and you know legends of golf, just for that little quick snippet on camera where they say thanks to a PGA professional who has influenced their lives in many ways. Absolutely, there's and yeah, there's a ton of our guys down here that you know it just makes you think about all the people that they've influenced and they've had an effect on and really, you know, changed, changed their lives. The one thing about this show, and I'm sure you'll agree, you've been coming here for years, is uh, there's the standards, the staples that you see from equipment and apparel, and then you also find stuff that's off the beaten path a little bit, the new stuff, and we'll be again today taking a look at that. I'm sure you're intrigued by what you see every year that's a little bit different. Absolutely. It's really, yeah, you walk the floor and it's, you know, a lot of it looks the same, but a lot of it's really different. And you see all the new product stuff. It's cool to see everything they've come out with and how stuff has evolved over time. But it's a, it's a neat experience walking the floor and getting to see everything. And we'll take an up close and personal look at some of those new things and some of the old things, some of the staples here at the PGA Merchandise Show. Like I said, it's the 63rd annual, and we'll have more for it coming up next right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by Destination Montco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life, and Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts, in the game and business of golf. Along with being stewards of the game of golf, your local PGA professional wears many hats. We are teachers. We are players. We are managers. We are merchandisers. And community leaders. But we all wear one badge. PGA professionals are well-trained experts who work hard to share the joy of golf with our neighbors for over 90 years. To find your local PGA professional, visit phillypga.com. Brought to you by the Philadelphia section of the PGA. We are the experts in the game and business of golf. The first tee teaches you golf, but they also teach you life skills. We learn things you can use everywhere, every day. Hey like how to meet people you don't know. I'm Hello, Nicholas. I'm it comes in handy on your first day of school. Or interviewing for a job. Thank you. Some of the best golf lessons have very little to do with golf. The life skills young people learn at the first tee stay with them long after they leave. Visit thefirsttee.org to learn more. Hi, I'm Janie. Let's play some golf. As mentioned in our open Philly PGA sections, Leela Mackey has been busy all week and is now joined by Steve Tanner to talk about the PGA Junior League. Thanks, Harry. We're here with Steve Tanner, Director of League Golf for PGA of America. And Steve, tell us just a little bit about how this program has grown nationally. It's really exploded. They've got a huge booth here at the PGA Show. Tell us a little bit about you know what you've seen nationally as far as growth and people, parents' reactions and that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So pleasure to be here. And you know, PGA Junior League Golf is uh, it was founded in 2011, really with a focus on getting kids playing golf on teams, wearing jerseys, and, and really a, a format that's so familiar to them with all of their team sports. Um, and the national growth has been phenomenal. We had 30,000 kids uh, on 2,500 teams last year. 
And it's really thanks to our PGA golf professionals that are implementing it at their facility, giving these kids a great experience. And uh, we're really excited about the future. I mean, we think that uh, you know the, the 30,000 number could have maybe a zero or two um, as we think sort of five, 10, 20 years down the future. But in Philadelphia, we've had tremendous growth. I would love to hear a little bit about how it sort of impacted your members and, and some of the positive stories that kids have had there in, uh, in your section. Absolutely, it's really grown in our section tremendously since I started. I started in 2013 and we had the first year 24 teams in our area and from then 2014 we had 65 and then last year we had 105 so it's grown really rapidly and among private and public facilities I think it's kind of important for people to know it's not just for private clubs or it's not just for public clubs it's really about a 50-50 split between private and public facilities but it's really been great for our PGA professionals it's driven revenue to their facility but not only that it's brought families together it's brought kids together on a team it's just it's a totally different atmosphere now um, for junior for junior golf it's really been been great and so we hope to grow again double our numbers again this year um, we had a spot in the regional championship and and that's what's so cool about the, the format and the program of it is even if you have a, a even if you're a beginner you can still make that 10 foot putt to win the hole or to win the flag or to even win the match uh, and it's just it's a really rewarding thing to see and, and thanks to our golf professionals for really bringing it all to life for us Steve thank you so much for everything you've done I know there's been a lot of changes um, a lot of great changes that we've done to make it better and grow and thank you for all your help at the national level and we'll continue to keep growing it in the Philly section locally. Fantastic, thank you. Well, Imperial Headwear is celebrating its 100th anniversary. 1916 it began. David Schaefer wasn't around then, but he is now and he's director of marketing. Yes. Okay, basically you had a new product last year that came out, Dave, that dealt with a cooling hat. Yes, we did. And now you've added to the line with a cooling towel and yeah. you're gonna explain how naturally this will cool a golfer off on one of those hot, humid days in Philadelphia. Right. So last year we came out with a, a line of cooling headwear, uh, and it was so successful that this year we're coming out with a cooling towel. Okay, how does it work? So how, how it works is uh, I'm going to show you a demonstration right. uh, with hot water. So we'll take this quickly. So water is in this canister, and it's 140 it, degrees. 140 water. degrees temperature. You dip the towel in there. Going to get this wet. Just wring out the excess water, take the temperature, done nothing, it's 87 degrees. Wow. So now I'm just going to introduce some airflow to activate uh, the, the, the evaporation process. Okay, so there's the airflow. And this is actually like the body sweating, it's the towel sweating, right? Yeah, if you can feel it's cold to the touch now. 69 degrees. Look at that. So it dropped that? 18 degrees in no time, and I can feel. Oh, boy, it feels like feel it came good. out of the freezer. It's unbelievable. How about and that? All you have to do is keep it wet. So right. you just and the same thing. Water. You can do the same thing with the hat. Do Get a little water, douse it, or, or just start sweating. Or your own any, natural. Any moisture will activate the evaporation process. Okay, and That's the good part about it, there's no chemicals involved. So the more you sweat, the cooler the towel or the hat gets. We like to sweat. We like to say, make sweat work for you. <laughs> there you go, folks. Make that sweat work for you. It's not a nuisance. It <laughs> right. can be a cooling agent, right? Now this is the 15th club in the bag, I think. Thanks, David. I keep running into people down here at the PJ Merchandise Show who need no introduction. And here's one of them, Marty Hackle. Marty, it's great to see you again. Great to see you. Unbelievable. Marty, you're the fashion editor for Golf Digest, among other things. You're, I always feel underdressed when I'm with you. It's talking about underdressed, there's a movement, at least on the European tour, yeah. to have to allow now tour players in practice rounds, pro-ams, to wear shorts. And all of a sudden, everybody's saying, wow, it's going to cross the pond. It's going to be here in the States, maybe not just for practice rounds, but for competitive rounds. I'm coming to the number one fashion guy in golf. Okay. What's your reaction? I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. This is the way we all play golf. What's wrong with a bunch of pros looking like everyone else? <laughs> they certainly can play better than us, and they're certainly not going to dress better than us. So I think the European tour has done a fantastic job breaking the ice here. However, I don't think it's going to happen so easily 
on this part. No, you don't think the PGA Tour or the USGA? I think the PGA Tour is going to be a little bit more careful about this. Well, they're probably going to wait and see what the reaction is back there. You know, the caddies wear shorts, and I think they look just fine. So I don't see tour players looking, you know. And well, okay. most of them, most All of them right. are in great shape, yeah. flat bellies. Yeah, maybe we'll convince Mark Kalkovecki to wear long pants, but <laughs> you know what? And I'm sure the apparel people would love it, right? It's a whole new line. Yeah, I mean, this is a building full of people <laughs> selling a lot more shorts than they're selling long pants. Absolutely. Speaking of uh, a fashion trend, Ricky Fowler now with the high top. Yeah. How, how, how long before we see Marty Hackle in the high tops with the pants tucked into them? Of course, if he's wearing shorts, you don't have to worry about that. Well, for me, it might be a little while. I'm ready to test the high tops. Puma's going to make them. They're going to be available pretty soon. And I've already got my order in for a pair because I want to see, really, are they really helping you that much? It's a new look. And, and when you wear them, Make sure you give us a call. We want to come out and follow you around. Maybe not for 18. Maybe we'll do one or two holes. How about that? Marty, always a pleasure. You look marvelous. So do you. (laughs) And you guarantee they'll get there. Yep. Stay with us. More to come from the Merchandise Show in Orlando. When we come back, we'll meet the man who had the idea to start Ship Sticks. You know, golf course superintendents are the unsung heroes of our great game. Thanks to the game's efforts, we now have turf that needs less water and is more sustainable and offers natural wildlife habitats on our courses. If you love golf like I do, like I do, like what I do, (laughs) thank a golf course superintendent. Thank a golf course superintendent. Do thank your golf course superintendent. Thank a golf course superintendent. A message from the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine, published by former Eagles tight end Ken Dunnick, is everything you want in a publication catering to men's interest. Enjoy articles on politics, business, the mob, wine, food, fitness, and travel. Written by the likes of George Anastasia, Bill Lyon, Sam Carcitti, and Mike Kern. Want to grow your business? Ask for information on our legacy and chairman clubs. They meet regularly and can be a valuable tool for your company. Subscriptions are only $20 a year for six issues. They're available at Jersey Man magazine.com welcome back to inside golf here at the PJ merchandise show in Orlando Florida is a golf trip in your future question is how do you get this to wherever you're going maybe the answer is right here in this box the name Ship Sticks pretty much says it all. Nick Coleman is the CEO. Actually, it was your idea how many years ago, Nick, to come up with Ship Sticks. So we, uh, we launched in 2011. Uh, with the idea had percolated for several years after you know, numerous, numerous buddy trips and aggravations associated with traveling. You know, it became very expensive shipping. Um, and the, the more stringent rules for checking in and checking baggage became uh, an impetus to, to launch the idea. More expensive and everything? Yeah, you know, it was the same time that Groupon launched, right? When that, the concept of leveraging the buying power of the masses to offer discounted services and solutions was a, a concept that resonated with myself and one of the other founders. And we thought, hey, you know, if we can apply that specifically to golf bag shipping, uh, we've got an underlying business model or principle that, you know, there's a tipping point at which a consumer will do something. Uh, it used to be a big headache for them to ship golf clubs. They'd have to put, you know, mix match boxes and take, you know, they'd figure out, they didn't know how to, to ship a box or they didn't know if they had to drive it down to a FedEx location or a UPS store. And so providing them with boxes and supplies has alleviated a headache on their side from the logistics side of the equation, as well as applying process and efficiency inside of that model while adding a value proposition to their members, their guests, and uh, anybody who's staying at any one of their facilities. Yeah, basically you just simplify the whole process. You talked about the the growth. I know uh, you've had, what, how many partners now in terms of country clubs or golf clubs? Just in the U.S.? So just in the U.S., we operate with probably about 3,500 now. Um, we add about 1,000 plus a year, uh, and that ranges from tour operators to tournament organizers to hotels to uh, golf facilities, public, private, resorts, munis, anybody that is attached to or part of or affiliated with golf in any, in any capacity. We operate with a lot of uh, corporations, too. So they have a, a travel department. They have 
an events department, and so we help them effectuate some, some value proposition for their guests too. From a marketing standpoint, I know a lot of people have seen the TV spot that's been running. You know Shipsticks only ships golf clubs, right? Honey, are we there yeah, yet? I'm sure that's been a popular spot, hasn't Fair, it? Fair as a one. Do you have anything lady. to do with that idea? You know, I you know I let that the, I let production the handle all of that. Um, but Fair is is awesome. She was wonderful to work with. Um, you know, we have a series of spots and series of commercials that we run, um, and we've created about 15 of those that you'll start to see over the course of the next year. Yeah, well, this is a great idea. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the idea and the growth of the company. Ship sticks. Thanks, Nick, for joining us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Tommy so said, you know, the clubs that we produce will suit 90% of the golfers. Now, it's almost the exact opposite now. I mean, you've got to... David Ledbetter's in the house. David, the busy guy these days. you got your own radio show on Sirius. You're uh, writing books. You're teaching. You're doing everything. Well, I've always done it, Harry. You know, it's like it's, uh, you know, it's a fascinating job to me. It's not just a one-dimensional job where I'm out on the tee teaching all day long, which, which I love to do, no question about it. But it's fun doing this stuff, you know, developing teaching aids and mainly promoting the A-Swing, which has really done great this year. Tell us about the A-Swing. Well, the A-Swing is a book I brought out in May. Uh, it was the first book I brought out for 10 years. I wanted to wait until I had really something to say, which I think is fairly revolutionary. Uh, it's a simpler way to swing the golf club and we're seeing some amazing results and so anybody's interested because if, you, if you're suffering with your golf game, I tell you, just try this A-Swing. You can get the book at Barnes & Noble on, you know, on Amazon. It's, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's really is a, a fascinating way of swinging the club. A little, it's just a simpler backswing to make the downswing that much easier. I have my own personal copy. Every time I sit down to watch TV golf, I have it right on my There you go. During commercials. It's, it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. You got to open it, there. I know. Oh, I do. I do. Tell me about Michelle Wee. She's one of your people. How's she doing? She's doing fine. You know, we we're always expecting great things from Michelle. Absolutely. We just know what talent she has, and so it's like, is it going to be now? Is it going to be this week? But I mean, this girl is so talented that if somehow she can just get it going, just get into a, a groove, so to speak. And so we're, we're sort of focusing this year on sort of consistency and trying to do the same thing over and over again because she's a perennial tinkerer. And uh, so we're trying to get her to stay, stay, on, stay aren't, on task. Aren't all golfers tinkerers? Well, they are, but you know, you, you can't keep changing your swing week to week. You've got to stick at something, you know? I know. Slow down. I hate to say it to you, but slow down, oh, enjoy well, it. It's fun, it's fun. So I'm enjoying it, Harry. So uh, as long as I'm enjoying it, I'm gonna keep doing it and hopefully helping golfers to to play better, enjoy the game more. And we enjoy you. Thank you, my friend. Thanks very much. Okay. Coming up next, our teed off panel. Really? Maybe other crowd don't like that stuff at all. I think it's forced. I think that Peter Jacobson and these other guys. Welcome back. We are at the Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's time for our teed off panel. And today joining us, no stranger to inside golf and teed off, Mr. Ken Dunnick, who Terry. is the publisher of Hold It Up. Here we go. We got Yuki Washington on the cover, Philly, Philly Man. Man, Jersey and Man, don't forget Jersey, Jersey Man, Man magazine, magazine. Right? right? Exactly. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ken, former Eagle, and now he's morphed into being a very successful magazine publisher. Scott Riley, speaking of success, now going into his fifth year as the head professional at Philadelphia Country Club. And we have Dom Giordano with us again here on Teed Off. Dom holds down the uh, 9 a.m. to 12.05 segment <laughs> every day, Monday through Friday of uh, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Gentlemen, uh, recently we saw, a few weeks ago, the tour stop in Scottsdale, Arizona, Phoenix Open, TPC Scottsdale, 16th hole. It's now completely surrounded by grandstands. It's like a mini baseball stadium, par three, and what an atmosphere. However, you contrast that with, say, a setting like another par three 16th hole at Augusta. Mm -hmm. A little bit 
different circumstances, right, Dom? I mean, let's Night face it. Well, TPC. Sure. I'm picturing the Augusta guys being dropped in the Phoenix. What would happen? They <laughs> you mean the Augusta. members? Yeah, the members. Uh, oh, my they'd God. get a little beer on their green jackets, <laughs> I think. But what's a better setting for you? 16th hole at Augusta. I don't like the Phoenix 16th hole. Really? Maybe other crowd don't like that stuff at all. I think it's forced. I think that Peter Jacobson and these other guys do all these crazy stuff around it, and it seems to me everybody has to live up to it. Wow. In fact, I think there's a lot of guys that are just drunk that are there. You think? Whereas when you get the 16th <laughs> hole on Sunday at Augusta, and that ball is trickling down that shelf coming in there, that is, or when Tiger Woods chipped in, of course, that's it. It's loud. It's intense, but it's proper. I, oh, it's very proper. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Tiger Woods on the 16th at uh, Augusta, one of the more famous right. shots when he chipped in off the green, I think in 09, right. and Chris DeMarco was like, are you kidding me? Uh, but he also had a hole in one in his history that at the seems, TPC yeah. Scottsdale, right. and he gave it the big pump and the crowd, yeah. which wasn't as big then as it is now, went crazy. Yes, I wonder what that could have been the start. For, what, what, yeah, that, that kicked off his whole career. Absolutely. What, uh, what is your favorite? You know, I've been to the 16th hole at the TPC, so. Um, during the tournament or just as a player? Not during the tournament, but yeah. I would say uh, Augusta special, no doubt. But uh, I think for what they're getting out in, in Phoenix and over 600,000 people to come to a tour event, that is a model to shoot for, for a lot of, you know, weekly tour events to, to attract those type of crowds. They've created a, a party type atmosphere. Oh, um, without people are embracing it. I think what would be interesting, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go with the 16th at the waste management just for a, the fun level of setting. Okay. It might be a generational a thing too, right? A little bit. Maybe. I mean, in Dom's case, I mean, I, I left like, my green jacket at home, but yes, yeah, I'll stick with it. Yeah. Like the, that would put the breathalyzer, to, that would blow it up, right? I want to see the decimal rating. I, I, want, I want more fans to come to golf, and I think Tiger Woods did that in the right way. But these guys strike me as yahoos. <laughs> More than anything. No question. Yeah, yeah. Even Scott would agree with yeah, you on exactly. that. Oh, don't yeah, disagree yeah. with it, but they're having a good time, right? They're having a good time. In both ways. All right, Kenny, you're, uh, you know, it's a 1-1 court so far here. <laughs> Listen, you, you picked the two right holes. There could be no greater contrast than the church-like atmosphere of the 16th at Augusta versus the raucous atmosphere at Scottsdale. If you're making me choose, Augusta's on my bucket list. I'm going with the 16th at Augusta. But again, I find that 16th hole at Scottsdale refreshing because golf is so quiet and you know pristine and precise and here you've got just mayhem going on and I had to play football in those conditions you know <laughs> it's not quiet on a football field you got linebackers screaming at you you got 70,000 people in the stands so I find that uh, Scott still whole refreshing actually. Yeah. and you know I don't know if it's because of what we've seen at the uh, at the Phoenix event but in the last Ryder Cup the the, the opening tee box had that st same stadium effect mm -hmm. And you saw Bubba Watson and Polder both encouraging everybody to become yahoos. That's what they were. Oh, yeah, right. cheering, being part of that. When there's something that happens, I'm all there with it. But I, you know, I, I just said, I, I, I wonder about the pros too. You would know better playing under that. They have to say, oh, isn't it magnificent and all that. But some of those guys, I look at them, they don't look like they're enjoying it when they step up on that tee. There's a lot of pressure. It's even tougher, I think. Forget being on that hole. It's the hole next to it. It's it's putting on 15. Right. Sure. It's teeing off on 17. You know, and you just don't know when that roar is about to happen. Right. You know, so there about, you are, about ready to hit your shot. You how can, about the fact too that they boo guys when they miss? <laughs> you know, like or first of all, if they put it in the bunker. Right. Or if they miss the green, or if they miss a makeable birdie putt, they get howled at. Yeah. I mean, well, that's I the know. Philadelphia part I kind of like. <laughs> that part is good. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Kenny broke it. We had the ice jam here between Scott and Dom, but uh, Mr. Dunning says no, he's going to Augusta. We'd like to know what you think. Hey, follow us on Twitter at Inside Golf, and we'll be back with more Inside Golf in just a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, and it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, and there are nearly 500 guest rooms, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. At the first tee, they're teaching us how to set goals. It doesn't matter how big or small they are. I wanna break 80 someday. My goal is to go to college. Someday, I'm going to be the fourth female president of the United States. Mm, maybe fifth. 
Some of the best golf lessons have very little to do with golf. The life skills young people learn at the First Tee stay with them long after they leave. Visit thefirsttee.org to learn more. One of my goals is to get on TV. Check. Along with being stewards of the game of golf, your local PGA professional wears many hats. We are teachers. We are players. We are managers. We are merchandisers. And community leaders. But we all wear one badge. PGA professionals are well-trained experts who work hard to share the joy of golf with our neighbors for over 90 years. To find your local PGA professional, visit phillypga.com. Brought to you by the Philadelphia section of the PGA. We are the experts in the game and business of golf. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf here at the PJ Merchandise Show in Orlando, Florida with Lila Mackey. And Lila, uh, I know, well, I know your background and how you got interested in golf and your job currently with the Philadelphia section of the PGA. But share with us and our viewers uh, this golf course management degree that you have from? Clemson University. That's the other reason I love coming down here. I get to see all my Clemson friends, my PGM directors. Um, but yeah, I started as a professional golf management student at Clemson University. That was my major, a double major with, with business administration, but um, that was what I wanted to do, and they really got me where I am today. You know, it got me all my internships in the golf business and oh, got me to PGA work for the there, Philadelphia section, the and action, it's really great to see all those guys down here getting every And they had their own exhibit booth here, right, did, uh, yeah. on golf course management, several schools involved. Yeah, all the PGM um, professional golf management programs, there's about, I think, 20 schools or so. Um, give or take, have their own booth here at the here at the show every year. Thanks, Lula, for your help this week. As uh, Lula has been joining us here on Inside Golf and our coverage of the annual PGA Merchandise Show. And don't forget, thank a pro. Hashtag thanks PGA Pro. There you go for Lula Mackey. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you, don't pick up. And we'll see you next time right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by Destination Montco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life, and Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.